In this video, I'll show you how to paint the cloak and the parchment for St. Celestine. Welcome back to part two of this How to Paint Celestine series. I hope you enjoyed part one. And for part two, we're gonna do the cloak, we're gonna do the doves, uh, we're gonna do the purity seals there. So this is what we had at the end of the first video. So if you've not seen that, I'll put a card up there so you can click on it. Uh, go back, get to this point, and then we will make a start on the cloak. So first thing to do is get some Corax white. Um, and we want to paint the inside of the cloak. So this is a, a grey sear prime, or a prime with grey sear. We just want to take some Corax white along the inside. And this is, you know, it's fairly thin down. So you can see you get a nice smooth white coverage on there. So make sure you cover that. doesn't matter if you go over the purity seals at all. We also want to paint the doves as well. Um, we don't want to throw too much paint on the doves because there's a little bit of detail on them. So just take your time, don't brush too hard. So if you brush too hard, you see you move the model around and you could damage something. It's a really delicate model, this. So like I said, it's a gray sear base. You can use any light gray primer. And the reason we go with a light primer on this is because it just it's just quicker to put the base coats on after you can get away with just one coat. You don't have to put two, three, four in some instances because this is quite bright colours as well. So get all the doves covered with the Corax white, get the inside of the cloak covered with the Corax white uh, and then we'll come back and we'll start work on the outside of the cloak. When all that Corax white is dry we can do the outside of the cloak and we're just going to base it to start with and we'll do all the base colours first before we go in and do any of the the detail work. So I'm just going to use my fist and red to base the outside of the cloak. Now I've thinned it down quite a bit because it's going over the grey sea and it's a really it's a really powerful red. So just things to be careful of when you're getting towards the edge that you don't run over too much and accidentally paint the Corax white underneath. And also just around where the purity seals trail starts, just take your time working in there so that you don't get Mephist and Red all over them and it doesn't matter if you do, it's just easier for the next step if you don't. So just take your time, get a nice coat of Mephist and Red. If you do need to do two, that's fine. I'm hoping to get away with just one. So I'll finish the rest of this off cam, we'll come back and then we'll have a look at basing up the, the purity seals next. You've got that lovely uh, Mephist and Red done. We're just going to take some Shapti Bone and we're just going to paint this all over the trailing purity seals. You can see there, I've got it quite thin, so I'll go in and I'll put two coats in on, on this to get a really nice solid bone colour. So, like I said, we're just really base coating now to start. And we're going to cheat a little bit with these because we could spend a lot of time just painting freehand and things like that. But the Sisters of Battle, the new sets, they've got some really good decals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of the decals from the Sisters of Battle set along here as well as showing you how to do sort of freehand scrolling text really briefly. So when you get into here, be really careful that you don't get it all over the red. It's okay to get it over that fleur de lis. Again, I've been correct on my pronunciation, so I hope I'm finally doing it right. Fleur de lis. Because you really pronounce a hard S. So to my French followers, I'll take any feedback you've got for me on that. So I'm just going to finish off the Shabti bone on here. Work your way around it. There's quite a lot. Don't forget to do the inside as well as the outside. And when we come back, um, we'll start shading. We've also got that little purity seal there to do as well, so we'll do that. And if you haven't got one, get hold of a Sisters of Battle transfer sheet. When the Shabdi bone is dry, it's going to take some Agrax Earth shade, and we're just going to shade down the bone colour. So don't forget you've got this bit of parchment here. 
So we don't want to flood it with Agrax Earth Shade, so we just want to move it around a little bit. And then the same for the the big length of parchment. So we'll put a little bit extra in here because we want to make that fleur de lis stand out. Not just around the edges there. And then all we want to do is we want to really just pull this down the parchment. Now it's going to settle in some places, but we don't want it to be massively different. So keep the Agrax Earth Shade moving. You do like I'm doing here, you can use the side of your brush. Because whilst we want to shade it, we don't want to darken it too much. Because if we darken it too much, it's a bit of a pain to then go back in and highlight. And you start to get big changes in colour. Which, you know, it's okay. So you can see there, look, it's pooled. So all I'm going to do is move the brush back through it. And then here on the edges, we're going to pull it back down towards the bottom. Because as gravity takes over, that's where the wash will pool and that's that's kind of what we want we want the high points to be light and we want the dark points to be sorry the low points to be a little darker so work your way around don't forget you've got quite a lot of parchment so make sure you don't miss any and then we'll come back and we have a little look at uh, highlighting it give that agrax earth shade 10 minutes or so to dry and we're going to go back and highlight. We're just going to go in with the Uchampi bone we used. So, in terms of how we do this, we're going to do some edge highlighting along some parts of it. And we're going to do kind of some area highlighting along other parts, a little, a little like I've just done there. So, what we're looking to do with this, and again, this Uchampi bone is quite, quite thin. So you may have to go in and give it a second coat in some areas. But one thing we can do really easily is we can run it along the kind of edges there. And then what we're looking to do is pick out the kind of the high points. And what we do is we move the paint towards the high point because the, you get the most paint where the brush finishes so by moving the brush towards the height point you get a nice little bit of a blend or the impression of a blend and you, like I said you can go back in after and just add a second coat of your shabti bone if you feel you need it so I'm just working my way down the outside of this particular bit of parchment so there's quite a bit of it so you've got the insides to do as well so take your time if you make a mistake don't worry just you can add a little bit more agrax earth shade if if that's what's needed or you can just paint the whole thing in a shabby bone and reshade the whole thing just work your way you're looking for an old distressed paper look aren't you really so whatever works it'll be different for everyone so I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then we'll add another highlight to it and then we'll move on to the uh, the red part of the cloak next. When you finish working the Ushabdi bone into some of those brighter areas, I'm just going to give it another highlight with a little bit of Screaming Skull. This is for the edges of the parchment. And also a little bit... So Make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and you can just, you know, it's where you've got those highest areas. You can just really make a nice soft highlight there, like that. Again, moving the brush to where you want the the brightest bit of light to be. Because that's where most paint will be distributed. So we're not going to use too much Screaming Skull because we don't want it to uh, make the parts front look too bright. But it is nice just to have... A little bit of light in some areas especially these bits like here where you've got sort of really pronounced folds so just work your way around using the screaming skull where you think is required and if you want to skip this step because you're happy then you can I mean I just want to put a little bit of extra pop on some of the some of the edges 
and when we do use the decals later we'll probably aim to put those over the kind of brightest parts so work your way around make sure you do all the edges of the parchment just like that because you can just run the the brush down the side that's nice and straightforward and then when we come back we'll jump onto the red cloak to shade the cloak I'm going to use Flesh Terra's red contrast paint this is quite a thick uh, thick paint so I don't want too much on my brush and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it into the folds and if you go over again you can just tidy up with some of fist and red this is a nice easy way of just getting a little bit of shade in through the red where you need it and you can always go back and tidy up add more take away depending on how it looks when it dries because of course it'll always look different once it's dried see there's some quite a few deep Fold where shadow would naturally fall on the cloak. So what I always advise is to just get that first layer in and then see what you think about it. Because you can always go back in and add more. It's always easier to add more than it is to take away. So just keep that in mind. And obviously be careful not to go over any of the bits you've already coloured in. So I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll kind of reassess where we're at with the shading if we need to do a little bit more or not and then we'll go on to the next stage. It's really important that you let that flesh tears red dry before you go and add a little bit more. So all I did was I just put another couple of lines in the deepest recesses just to make them a little darker. So we'll start highlighting this cloak and the colour I'm going to use is Evil Sun Scarlet just looking at moving this along those kind of highest points just take your time doing this if you make a mistake you can just go in and correct it and also as you're doing this don't forget that we've got that red cloth on the front of Celestine as well so make sure you go back and complete that I'm also going to just pull a little, it's a thick highlight, but we'll go in and we'll use a thinner highlight underneath it to, to really kind of emphasise the flow on the cloak. So when you're happy with that highlight, and if you decide, oh, do you know what, actually they're a little bit too thick, then you should take some of Fist and Red just to tidy up. But as it dries into the cloak, it should blend down a little bit. So I'm just going to go off cam now, make sure everything is working. I'm going to go finish the, the cloth on Celestine as well. And we've got the kind of red part of her, of her bodice there. So I'm just using the uh, tip of the brush for this, just to get into these areas. So I'm going to finish the rest of this off cam. When we come back, we'll pop another highlight in there to finish off the red. To finish the highlighting of the red, we're going to take some Wild Rider Red. And we're going to use this, but quite sparingly. And we're going to make sure that we're doing just thin lines inside that Evil Sun Scarlet. So take your time. And you can see there, it just gives it that brighter colour. Keep it nice and thin. And also don't forget to do the extra highlights on Celestine herself as well. And that's the red of the cloak done. Again, it's easier to put less highlights on and then go and add them later than it is to add too much and then realise that you have and you've got to try and take them away. So work to your own designs and your own speed and then we'll come back and we'll do the doves next. 
paint the doves we're going to use nylac oxide and I've not got very much on my brush at all as you can see there's hardly any on it so I need a little bit more than that actually I'm just gonna paint the kind of the, into the tails like that and around the wings themselves and we're just gonna let it dry and then once it's dried we might go in and add some more just so we've got that nice ethereal colouring that the box art shows us. This is uh, designed to be more of a, a kind of a subtle tint on the doves rather than a full on drowning of them in nylac oxide. So just take your time. Work your way around, let it dry, and then I think we'll come back and see how it's looking. I'm not sure, I may highlight it with some white later. I'm not sure, we'll see how how it looks. And don't forget you've got the, the underside as well. And with the underside, because it's technically going to be a little darker, I might use a little more lilac oxide. Just kind of all over, rather than just along the wings and the tail as I've done on the upper side. So I'm going to carry on finishing this, we'll come back have a look and if we need to add some more we will. With the doves done let's have a look at the inside of the cloak. So I'm going to use some apothecary white contrast paint. And I'm going to use this the same way I used the fleshed hair of red really where I'm just going to aim to get it into the just the recesses rather than uh, covering the whole of the cloak and by doing it this way just again mix clear up a little easier later on and one thing I would say as well with the apothecary white contrast paint just be careful when you come towards other colors that you've already painted because it can uh, it can stain I'm just going to work the apothecary white into all the kind of the folds, the darkest parts. I'm going to let it dry and see how it looks. And I'll probably add a little bit more in the kind of the deep, deep recesses. And probably more important than ever with this contrast paint, make sure it's fully dry before you go near it again. So let that dry and then we'll come back and have a look if we're going to add some more in. With that apothecary white, I've done exactly the same thing I did with the flesh terror red on the on the cloak, and that is once it's dried, I've just put a little more in the kind of the deepest recesses. So what we want to do now, and again, make sure it's dry, because if it's not dry, it's a lot more risky when you come to do the highlights, and you may end up messing up. So I'm just going to take some white scar, and I'm just going to work this along the kind of the highest point. So we've got a nice high point there, coming down the cloak there. We don't need to use too much of this, we can use it quite sparingly because if you think about it, this is a highlight, most of this part of the cloak is going to be covered by Celestine's body. So it's not like we've got absolutely loads that we need to do with the white scar so that's not too bad I might just edge around there a little bit just to show a little bit of interest where the light is going to hit that might be a little too thick of a highlight there but that's fine it's going to work it in we let that dry and make sure that it's uh, looking pretty good and then we're almost done with this part so there's a couple of things. We're going to do the transfers on the parchment and we've also got some detail to, to paint on the cloak as well. So I think we'll go for the detail on the cloak next. So I'm going to let that white scar dry and then when we come back I'll show you how to paint that. One thing I'm going to do before I get involved too much with the, the freehand painting is I'm just going to take a little bit of gloss varnish. This is Vallejo gloss varnish. You can get all the gloss varnishes from Goblin Gaming, links in the description, you get up to 20% off, so 
you know if you're missing some paints or anything it's a really good uh, discount site delivery is really fast as well i think if you order same day before i think it's lunchtime you can get them sent out so all i'm doing is just put a nice thin layer of gloss varnish on and the reason i'm doing this is to just provide a smooth surface for when we apply some of the decals so work your way through that yourself uh, i'm going to do it off cam now we'll come back we'll do the freehand on the cloak and then we'll we'll have a look at the decals once that gloss varnish is dry you can kind of go back in and have a look at getting the uh, freehand work done now I'm going to use Mephiston Red for this. I've really thinned it down and watered it down. And it's going to be awkward to show you this on camera. So I'm just going to do this kind of corner here. So all you want to do is just draw a thin line. And as far as you can, keep the distance between the line and the bottom of the cloak the same. You want to do this all the way around, so you see it'd be quite difficult for me to do that on camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do some of the detail that's on uh, Celestine's cloak itself. So whilst we've got the red line, we've also got these designs here. So brace your hands. And you want to get a nice vertical line in there. Then we're going to draw kind of like an arrowhead. We're going to draw it across. And that's done. Now, if there's I mean, you make a mistake, you can just take some Corax white and go back over it. If this intimidates you, don't worry about it. You don't have to do it to get a great model. If you just want to do the line in the cloak, do the line in the cloak. If you want to leave it blank white, leave it blank white. I'm going to finish that design off camera and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at doing the transfers and then this part of the tutorial is pretty much done. So before we go ahead and put some decals on, let's have a look at the Sisters of Battle decal sheet and I'll show you what I mean in terms of some of the, the icons that are on there. So all this area here, we've got some nice bits that we can use as part of the scroll work. So instead of trying to freehand your way through all the parchment, you can get really effective looking scroll so the kind of bits we're going to use we're going to use these fleur de lis here we're going to use these um, imperial eagles the skulls we're going to use these parts here we might use some of the inquisitorial eyes i'm not sure and we've got these kind of start letters here as well so we're going to use a few of them across the the parchment i've got quite a few transfer sheets from some of the sisters of battle packs i've got so i'm going to have plenty just pick a few pop them on there once we finish that we'll have a look at putting some matte varnish over them just to tie them down and the last thing we'll do is we'll freehand some scroll work because whilst you've got these scrolls here there's not really enough there to go all over everything so rather than having different looking scroll work we'll just do freehand it's, it's really straightforward and easy so it should be fine so i'm going to go away and cut some of these out we'll come back and i'll show you how i apply them okay so what i've done is i've cut some of those those decals out and what i intend to do is have a look at the box art to guide where they're going to go so I've got a pot of water. I'm just going to pop my decal in the pot of water. I'm going to take an old brush. And I'm just going to maybe wet the area that I want to place that decal. So I'm going to pop, a, pop it in there. And then once the decal has got wet enough, or soaked enough, it'll start to come away from the the backing and I'm just going to put it in that spot there and then when I'm happy with it I'm just going to dry my paintbrush off just pull away any excess water around it might move it up a little bit just to there and when you're happy with it you can leave it dry so another example of something I might put on so on the back side here. So we've got a fleur de lis in there. So maybe what I might put underneath it is just the uh, Inquisitor decal as an example. Now, if you've never used decals before, 
<clears throat> try it with some ones that you know you're not going to use and just practice on a spare model or something. They are pretty straightforward, but some of the bigger ones can be a little bit uh, finicky and a bit more difficult to use. So I've popped that on there. I'm just going to move it into place, making sure it's evenly spaced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through the rest of the parchment using some of the other decals that I've got as part of the sister, ba sister of battle. I'm going to space them out quite wide. Once I finish that, we'll come back. We're going to give it a coat of matte varnish, which I won't show you on camera because it's exactly the same as the gloss varnish. Once we apply the matte varnish, I'll show you how to do the freehand text. Then this part of the tutorial is pretty much done. So I finished the decals and I put some matte varnish over it so you can see how I've chosen to use some of the different designs on there just to kind of spaced out across the parchment. So what we need to do now is fill the rest of the parchment in with some text. So the colour I'm using for this is Rhinox Hide. So you need a good tip on your brush and you need to water it down. So I've watered this down maybe two to one paint to water and all you've got to do is just squiggle the brush along just like that. Now you can use different colours if you want. So you can use black, you can use red, if that's the colour that you want to use. That's fine, you can have a bit of fun with this. Because this is just the text on the scroll work. So when you come to a letter a little bit like that, you're kind of only doing the lines like that. And then underneath you go. So make sure you leave some gaps between some of your squiggles because that looks like there's separate words on there then so you need to work away all the way down the outside of the scroll work and the inside of the scroll work and once you've done that this part of the tutorial is complete so i'm going to paint the base as well with steel legion drab just to give a little bit of contrast in terms of color we'll stick celestine on and then we're ready for part three where we'll do the wings and all the finer details there we have it the cloak the doves and the parchment are all done I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. In part three, we'll pull everything together and do all of the last final bits of details, as well as the final assembly. In the meantime, if you want to get 15 to 20% off your Games Workshop products, you can do using the link in the description with Goblin Gaming. And you can also find my recommended equipment using the link for Amazon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.